guitar. Today we're doing a very special video, in my opinion. We're doing a song from Julian Lodge. Julian is uh, one of my heroes. He's one of my biggest inspirations uh, as far as a guitarist, a musician, an improviser, and a composer. And just as a human being, he's just uh, one of my favorites. Um, he's sort of a hometown hero for me. He's uh, from Santa Rosa, which is just 20 minutes north of where I'm from, which is Petaluma. His first teacher, Randy Vincent, was also my first jazz guitar teacher. <laughs> so, you know, I'm sort of very honored that uh, I, I've met him. He did a residency at Sonoma State where he, he went actually as a, as a youngster, but he came back and did a residency while I was there in 2010, I want to say. I was able to play with him a little bit. There's actually a video of us playing uh, while I was in the Latin Jazz Ensemble because he was gracing the stage with us all. And I'm truly honored and inspired by those moments. So he's somebody who it's kind of hard to talk about in just one video. So maybe I'll keep coming back to him in different videos. But he's spanned everything from traditional jazz to more modern indie rock kind of sounds as well. I've seen him live a handful of times. It's, it's always something different and amazing. And this is the first song off of Love Hurts. This is his 2019 album, Love Hurts, where basically uh, he's really just very raw and honest. He recorded it in Chicago at um, the same studio that Wilco often records, um, blanking on the name. So it's the loft in Chicago where he recorded this. And apparently it was just the first few takes for most of these songs. He really wanted to get the early takes uh, on this record. And you can really tell the emotional depth and brilliance of the album. It's just very raw, but still really nicely done at the same time. As far as this song, uh, I know a lot of my channel is not focused on jazz necessarily, so this is a song that can be done at the level of my audience, I believe. It's something where he's taken an arrangement from a song from Eraserhead, the 1970s uh, movie from David Lynch. And uh, he's arranged this song for, for chord melody, but you know, compared to many of his other songs, I'd say this is definitely more accessible for somebody who, who doesn't have a ton of experience with jazz. And you're basically taking the melody here, putting it over this bass line at the beginning. Okay, And that's something that is actually a good lesson for us all. If you're doing jazz or chord melody or uh, guitar arranging, solo guitar, you kind of want to think about melody and bass and the chord is somewhere in the middle. So after he runs the melody and bass line one time, uh, he starts to fill it in with the chord in between. And that's actually something that I recommend in general if you're going to do some solo guitar work or arranging, is think about those two things, especially when it comes to chords that are a little more complex. You might just want to start with the bass and melody. So I'll put the tab and the sheet music of this on Patreon. You might want to try reading the sheet music of this because uh, I'll put that above the tab. And sometimes the tab doesn't tell us enough information and we're really nicely in the key of B flat minor, but he's going to play around with that key a little bit as we'll see. And it's kind of nice to just read the music if you're going to do jazz and stuff. I, I kind of, uh, it doesn't feel right doing tabs with jazz to be honest. So you maybe switch gears a little bit and see if you can learn how to read music with this somewhat entry level uh, piece as far as difficulty, although it's still rich with, with depth. Okay, so. <laughs> third fret, that's our, our tonic note here is B flat. And we're going to go to F, which is the fifth here, and we're going to put a B flat bass. So this is the first chord here. Now, in the song it's minor, but he's going to do major later, but right now we don't have to worry about that. It's just melody and chord. Or, sorry, melody and bass. So third fret, and then sixth fret twice. Now I'm doing hybrid picking because I'm trying to uh, learn from Julian here, but you're welcome to do this finger style as well. Hybrid picking is sort of a newer technique for me, to be honest, but I've done it on a few videos here and there, but he's a master of it. So we're gonna go like that. Okay, now we're gonna reach for that fourth fret, and I am doing this with the ring and pinky, by the way. Fourth fret, first string, that's the flat seven of B flat minor. Then a, um, a G flat here, that's the flat six. So all fitting the key. Now E flat minor. So I just bring my ring finger down a string to the four chord. It's a minor chord. And now I'm hitting the nine of that E flat, which is F. Then B flat, but I need to go, uh, sorry, not B flat. 
uh, to uh, D flat, which is the fifth of G flat here. Then I need to grab the melody note here, which is B flat. So that's the fifth or third of G flat. See? And this G flat is the flat six chord. All right? So, so far we have one chord, melody up there. Four chord, flat six chord, melody note. That's the phrase. That's the first phrase. Three, four, starting of the phrase, but the third time we go two more B flats, E flat to F over the E flat minor. Still to G flat, but this time we go down to F minor here. Twice on an A flat note, that's the third string first fret. Then B flat, D flat, E note, like an E6 basically, but all we need is the sixth and first string open. Second fret, second string. That's the C sharp, that's the six. Now we're gonna resolve that to our relative major key, which is D flat major. Okay, that's the flat three of B flat minor. We're gonna go E flat D, the nine to the one. Then we're gonna get our middle finger all the way down to that bass, that, that G flat bass. Now we're gonna walk up. Third fret, fourth fret, first, second, third, fourth, second, first, fourth, back home. So that again is from here, G flat, G, A flat, B flat, B, C, D flat, uh, B flat, sorry, B, B flat, A flat, B flat, one more time. Kind of a chromatic run there for a bit okay that's the uh, full first phrase now the second phrase we're going to add in the chords so first time he just kind of grabs a b flat here this is a non-typical way to play a b flat this is like the g shape but first grab of that now we're going to grab the flat third of this e flat minor here with the g flat So we add that fourth string, fourth fret. Now, on the G flat, you're welcome to just bar it. He's probably barring it. Let me let me, let me try it. Bar it. Okay. I, I, I was kind of doing this. So you're welcome to do that as well, all four fingers. But anyway, second string, first, fifth, third. Filling in that G flat major chord. Back to... This time we're going to add the major third. Very cool choice by Julian. He decided to make that major even though we're clearly in B flat minor with the rest of the chords and melody. But he's going to go adds to the sort of ominous vibe. You're making a minor chord major. You know, this is a pretty dark movie, right? So <laughs> he's sort of throwing a little bit of an interesting idea there. Same phrase same exact thing. Now, this time, on the F minor, hit the fifth string as well. All the same, just adding the other notes in there. Then he plays an E6. And then the melody goes first string, second, first, first. Same thing as before, but we're going to hit the major third here on the fourth string. And then when he goes here, before he walks up chromatically, he's going to go six, fifth, third strings of that, that chord. Then he finally ends it on a power chord, B flat five. Okay. Now the bay, the uh, now he does a little. I mean, we're not going to cover this, but he does a little. The bass, right? The bass kind of does a, a walking, not a walking, but a descending bass line. That's really cool. And 
he starts to quote the melody later, but at first it's like, whoa, we're kind of in a minor blues all of a sudden, but then he just, or like a vamp, but he just brings back the theme brilliantly throughout the song. And it's just a work of art. Uh, the whole album, the whole song, the whole, his whole catalog. So yeah, we'll be coming back to Julian. This is a great way to get going with jazz and with his, his work. Um, and I think that does it. And so, uh, Remember to subscribe, hit the bell icon, hit the thumbs up. Your homework is go listen to some Julian Lodge this week. Even if you're not going to learn his stuff, uh, I highly recommend just enjoying it and, um, and getting inspired from it. Maybe go see him play live too. All right. We'll see you later, everyone. Thanks.